Adrenal fatigue is one of the most common symptoms that people face after narcissistic abuse. It's a result of living with the bear. The ongoing stress in an emotionally and psychologically abusive relationship just takes a toll on the entire body because you live in a constant state of fight or flight. You never know what your abuser's next move is. It's always on your mind and you just cannot run away. There's something called the neuro effect circuit in the brain. It includes the brain, the automatic nervous system, the microbiome in your gut. These three things in combination are what determine the state of your mental health. They are each individually and collectively affected by ongoing stress. You will know that you are suffering from adrenal fatigue if you are constantly tired, if you have brain fog, the main one is living in a constant state of anxiety and hypervigilance, just don't feel right in your body. You may also have depression. You may be someone who suffers from extreme fear and catastrophizing. Whenever a small thing goes wrong in your life, you think of how many other things could follow on from that that could go wrong. And then you start imagining all the things that could go wrong as a result of this one thing that has gone wrong. It's not only the adrenal fatigue, but it's living with a narcissist that has affected your mind so badly. Because nothing good comes out of a narcissist's mouth in terms of you, your qualities, your character, their voice becomes your inner voice, which leads you into this path of negative thinking, remuneration, and leads you on a path where you struggle to stop the bad thoughts and the catastrophizing. Another sign of adrenal fatigue is that you have a very low tolerance for stress. As human beings, we're, able, we're supposed to be able to handle a certain amount of stress because this is life, you know, things happen. But one sign that you're suffering with adrenal fatigue is something that others perceive to be small, is really big in your eyes and you describe things that happen as disasters for example you could spill some coffee and your entire day is ruined it may be perceived as others as a small inconvenience but for you it completely changes the course of your day and makes you feel like if you started the day by spilling your coffee what else could go wrong and makes you feel like a failure and makes you feel like bad things are going to follow you around. Minor stresses affect people with adrenal fatigue much more than they would the average person. But remember, adrenal fatigue is only the symptom of what is going on. You don't start by having adrenal fatigue, you start by going through emotional and psychological or narcissistic abuse. You may have trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, feeling well rested when you wake up, no matter how many hours of sleep you get. The main thing is that you always feel like there's an impending doom. Like there's this dark cloud following you and it feels like nothing can go right. Making this video makes me so sad because it reminds me of my dad's mindset so much. He really struggled with this. The hypervigilance, the super catastrophizing, always thinking that something bad was going to happen. Adrenal fatigue also leads to neurodegeneration. As I said, brain fog is one of the symptoms, but brain fog sounds very minor, but for you to get to the point of having brain fog, especially if you are a young person, please don't take it lightly. You shouldn't be having brain fog. You shouldn't be having moments where you, your, your mind is fogged and your thinking is not clear. And even if you aren't a young person, there is nothing good about having brain fog. And I beg you to work on it. I will give you tips at the end of this video, as I always do, but please don't take it lightly. I used to have brain fog. It freaked me out because I would just go blank. And I was so scared to tell anyone because I thought I was dying. But those are signs from your body that you need help and you need to get out of whatever situation is causing you to develop these symptoms. Narcissistic abuse affects your entire self. It affects your self-esteem. You stop believing in yourself. You stop believing in the goodness of life. For me, it even made me stop believing in God. I didn't even think I was going to get to the age that I am right now. Some days were 
just so bad and I remember being as young as 13 and thinking about analyzing myself and I thank God I didn't because I, I made it and I want you to know that you will too if you are stuck living with a narcissist if you are stuck living with someone who's emotionally and psychologically abusing you please know that your day of freedom will come i need you to hang in there the same way i told myself one day i won't be here anymore and i will be free i don't know where i found the strength to hang on but i'm glad i did because i can truly say that i love life and I enjoy it so much and there is so much happiness and beauty out there and it's waiting for you and most of all that you deserve it and it will come. Whatever you're going through, you will make it. You have already clearly started your healing journey if you are watching this video and I want you to just be your own best friend, be your own inner parent and love on yourself nothing is more healing than self-love and taking care of yourself emotionally spiritually mentally and physically take care of yourself there is so much power in that and as you know it's the last thing that the narcissist wants you to do and i promise to keep sharing as much as i can about my own journey in order to help you because it's been a long journey, I've learned so much, and if I can get from this to this, anything is possible. The scary thing about narcissistic abuse is that not only does it affect your adrenals, which sit just on top of your kidneys, which are so vital for life, I don't even think I need to explain that. Psychological abuse and stress can deteriorate the body in so many ways. You can end up with autoimmune diseases. You can end up with the worst of the worst, such as cancer and even death. How many people do you know of who have died at the hands of their abuser, especially in a domestic abuse setting? And not only physically abusive scenarios. Stress is the ultimate killer. I'm sure you've heard that so many times, but until you have gone through a relationship of any kind with a narcissist, whether it's a romantic partner, a parent, a sibling, a family member or a friend, that stress kills, takes on a whole new meaning. When you experience changes in your own body as a result of what you're going through. So if for whatever reason you are not able to remove the abuser from your life, maybe you live with them and you have nowhere else to go, maybe they are in super close proximity to you, or perhaps you're just not ready to go no contact. And I understand that because of how long it took me. I made the decision in 2017 and I only did it in 2023 for real. Here are some of the remedies that have worked for me that I'd like to share with you that I hope will help you to manage your symptoms and help you to come out of the fight or flight, the hypervigilance, the catastrophizing and belief that there is nothing good about this life because there is and it is coming to you. So if you are currently grey rock, or if you are trying your best to minimize contact as much as possible, use these strategies in the meantime, because the truth is nothing has been more healing for me than completely cutting contact, because this, this is not just physical, it's also energetic and it is a spiritual battle. So here's what you can do while you still live with the person abusing you. As you know, I always do my own research and I always try to heal myself before I turn to anybody else. So one of the first things that I found out about adrenal fatigue when I was first researching is that the adrenals really thrive on electrolytes. So that's the first thing that you can start to do. On a very basic level, what you can start doing whenever you have water is to add a very high quality salt to your water. And not this iodized table salt. I mean like a rock salt such as Himalayan salt or sea salt. This is the brand that I use. 
Electrolytes are minerals such as potassium and sodium. If you're not using anything else to replenish electrolytes, that will help you to strengthen the adrenals. Another option that you have is to get something like an electrolyte powder. This one is called the Adrenal Cocktail by Jigsaw. It's an American brand and it contains sodium and potassium as well as vitamin C. Alternatively, you can make your own adrenal cocktail and I will put a recipe over here because there are a few ingredients you have to get. The ratio is absolutely correct, but it's extremely nourishing to that part of your body. It will help you to feel so much better in terms of energy and feeling more balanced. If you are currently doing a low carb and low fruit diet i advise you to stop i was on a low carb and low sugar diet for a while and knowing that it was actually making my situation worse your body needs glucose in terms of carbohydrates especially the liver who knew <laughs> but your liver needs some kind of carbohydrate and glucose in order to do pathway one and two which are the detox pathways and if you're on a low carb diet you're actually burdening your liver and because everything is connected you'll be burdening your kidneys which also then burdens your adrenals which also affects other processes in the body so not that you must go and eat a high carbohydrate diet but try not to cut out certain food groups especially carbs which help with energy and sustenance and helping you to feel strong especially while you're going through this difficult time in your life so find a carbohydrate that suits you and suits your body because i know that if you're going through narcissistic abuse you have a compromised gut as it is and some carbohydrates such as rice white potato and other white carbohydrates can make you feel bloated but when you think of carbs also remember that certain vegetables have a very high carbohydrate content and instead of eating the refined processed white carbohydrates which are not always the healthiest you can always look for more whole food plant-based options like these I know that if you're watching this video, you've probably tried many remedies in order to heal. If you are doing low carb, you're doing it for a reason. And that's the thing. You will find on this journey that when you try to heal this, you'll need to do that. But when you try to heal this, you'll need to stop doing that in order to heal this. So you'll come to a point where you have to prioritize what do you want to heal first. For example, if you have thyroid issues and you have adrenal fatigue at the same time, which is very likely, because both are affected by stress and hormonal imbalances. Sometimes the guidelines for healing your thyroid will clash with those for healing your adrenals. But the moment you heal your thyroid, you'll be able to focus on healing your adrenals. So I know it's difficult, but trust me, you can do it. And your body is always working for you and never against you. So be thankful that you actually have access to the knowledge of what is going on in your body. Some people never know what's actually going on until it's too late. And if your body is giving you signs now while it's still fixable, then let's be thankful for that and let's work on that. And I wish you speedy and effective healing. I had to be low carb at the time because I was dealing with insulin resistance, not knowing that my liver was not able to do the necessary detox due to the low carb. But at the time, insulin resistance was my most major symptom. I was out of shape, I was overweight, the insulin resistance was causing me to be pre-diabetic, causing me to be dizzy, my blood sugar was unbalanced, and I felt at the time that I needed to focus on getting my insulin resistance because I knew that it would reverse the pre-diabetes and the word diabetes freaked me out enough to feel like I can just put the liver stuff as a secondary. So make your own decision for your body because you know yourself best. And of course, if you can, if you have the resources to, do it alongside a naturopath or a holistic practitioner who can also guide you and lead you in the right direction. For optimal adrenal health, three things need to be in place. Glucose from fruit and starchy vegetables, electrolytes like sodium and potassium, and lastly, B vitamins. I recently discovered the importance and the effect of B vitamins and wow, they are so good and they help with so many things in the body. My favorite of all is B6 and here's why. There is no health video that is complete without talking about the importance of hydration. 
as I've said in previous videos, whenever you have water, don't just drink plain water, always drink structured water. So if you don't have access to the juice or electrolyte powder, where else can you get potassium from? Out of all the things I've ever researched about holistic health, <laughs> this one really surprised me and I can't believe that it's right under all of our noses and we probably walk past it every single time you go to the grocery store. Did you know that cream of tartar, the same thing that people use to bake meringues for example, is actually pure potassium? The great thing is that cream of tartar is one of the most affordable things that you could ever buy. Probably the cheapest thing in the baking section. So if you don't have access to the Jigsaw Health electrolyte powder and if you don't want to spend money on all the powders that you see online, a good option for you to make sure that you're getting sodium and potassium is to make your own electrolyte drink by making a glass of water, adding a few grains of salt and adding one eighth of a teaspoon of potassium when you drink water and that's it and you will have your electrolytes covered. How easy is that? I like to make the electrolyte structured water every morning and every evening and I have it especially after gym if I've had a very sweaty routine and even if you don't have adrenal fatigue and you're watching this video whenever you do any physical exercise that causes you to sweat a lot that's a good sign that you've lost electrolytes and you need to replenish them so try this drink out and see how you feel but if you do have adrenal fatigue it's very unlikely that you are doing strenuous exercise but i hope you will try this out but i had to share this one with you because when you have adrenal fatigue you definitely need electrolytes to keep your kidneys and your adrenals strong and with that said if you do have adrenal fatigue please do not do exercise that makes you feel extremely tired do not over exert yourself because you will just make the situation worse you already have a stressful home life or a stressful emotional life the last thing you need to do is add physical stress to your beautiful and dear body. Rather, do exercises that are a bit more relaxing and calming, things like yoga, even Pilates is a bit much sometimes when you're going through adrenal fatigue, but see what fits and suits you and your lifestyle. See what feels good. You could walk, you could just stretch, for many years, I didn't go to gym and I didn't have a gym membership. I just did yoga twice a day and that really helped me to heal because it wasn't strenuous. I wasn't adding tax to my already taxed body. I hope you find something that you like. There are so many options these days. So do some research about calming and relaxing exercise types and pick the one that suits you best. Personally, one month after starting to structure my water with the salt and the cream of tartar, I noticed that I just felt more energized. And another surprising benefit was that I cramped much less on my cycle. And so I researched what else does potassium help with? And it says potassium helps with muscle cramps. So that's another benefit of doing this remedy and I hope it also surprises you by healing other things in your body that you may not have been aware of. One thing I've learned is that there is nothing more important than your vitamin and mineral level. The deeper you dive into holistic health, the more apparent it becomes. Most of all, healing adrenal fatigue just, you know, lit a light bulb in my head that made me realize the connection between the fact that our bodies are made of minerals and whenever we have a health issue, it is usually, most likely actually, caused by some kind of mineral deficiency. And I hope the same light bulb goes off for you. The food industry has told us so many lies. You do not need a certain, <laughs> you don't need a McDonald's burger to feel full. What you need to have a healthy, functioning, optimal body and to be of optimal health is to have all your mineral levels in check. What you need is vitamin C, vitamin D3, potassium, sodium, magnesium. This is what you need and you need to find food sources that help you to get those minerals, vitamins, and nutrients in. 
people are out here getting retinol for their faces knowing that retinol is vitamin A but if you ate foods that are filled with vitamin A wouldn't that be an even better way to get your skin looking beautiful because you'd be <laughs> healing your skin from the inside out rather than putting all these chemicals on your body this is very off topic but today I was in Boots and I yuked a certain retinal product and it scored 4 out of 100 oh, I couldn't believe it I had to walk out of the shop because I was like I can't do this anymore anyway I hope this video has helped you and I hope that my tips will help you and bring you to a better state of health and as usual I would like you to also look at what I've said and research it for yourself. Is what I'm saying true? Is what the food industry is saying true? Is what the media is telling you true? There is so much information online right now and it all conflicts and contradicts each other. One minute you should eat this and one minute you shouldn't. A healer is someone who teaches you how to heal yourself. So with all that I've said, I encourage you to also do your own research is the most important meal of the day breakfast or should you be doing intermittent fasting the answer lies within you within your body you know what's best for you don't let anybody tell you what you should be doing with your vessel that you've been gifted the vessel that you chose to have it speaks to you only you so please listen to it because trust me the body is always talking i I'm sending you love from the bottom of my heart because I appreciate you so much for being here. Thank you for helping me through my own journey. It is an honor to make these videos. And if you have any requests, please leave them in the comments. I will do my best to cover the topic that you ask for. Only if I have experience in it. I never want to speak about something I don't know about. And with that said, I'd like to thank one of my subscribers who requested this video three years ago and i'd like to apologize that it's taken me so long to make the video but i wanted to be sure about what i'm sharing with you and i wanted to be confident that my adrenal fatigue was no longer with me before i start to talk about it and start to give suggestions unfortunately when i click on your username it says user something so i cannot shout you out by name but i hope you're still here and i thank you for that comment you left it under the video on my channel called the root cause of adrenal fatigue on a metaphysical and spiritual level so if you haven't watched that one go to that one too i know that it will help you but thank you so much for that suggestion and thank you again for being here and see you next time have a wonderful week and may you heal from this symptom and most of all may you one day very very soon be free of whoever has caused this in your life